Hey everyone, this is Dr. Troy Schott. I am here with the Modern Martial Arts and Health Radio. I am bringing a guest on today. We're going to, uh, my guest is um, Nazim Rafi, and I am going to discuss Zuran Men with him and uh, Chinese martial arts in general and, you know, what, what he's teaching and, and he's going to kind of give us a good download on, on that and uh, hopefully we can we can learn some stuff because I'm actually really interested for this one as well so Nassim how are you? Hi uh, first of all thank you to have me here um, I'm fine I hope you're fine too yeah doing um, good. thank you yes uh, regards from Kassel in Germany uh, Kassel is like, is like the LA of Europe you know oh nice so Not it's really. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's so it's so it's packed packed with foreigners from the south, huh? Um, Kassel, uh, yeah, yeah, Kassel is actually um, in the heart of Germany. You know? Okay. If you're in Germany, it's directly in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Well, um, I hope you're doing well during this, uh, you know, epic pandemic crisis. That's pretty much. Um, stop the entire world from turning and uh you know at least you you and your family are staying healthy yeah so um yeah it's, the pandemic is a little bit shitty but <laughs> just don't eat bad soup <laughs> so just for the future advice if you see a bad don't eat it <laughs> I, that. I, I wish someone would have told me that years ago that's just uh <laughs> that's uh, blows my mind um it's but, funny. <laughs> well, I I just don't understand the, uh, the 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 thought process behind eating that 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 soup. I mean, you know, the a bat is not exactly a meaty animal, and um, you know, it's usually after events like this when people have been starving for a little while that they want to start eating creatures like that. Um, yeah, but. So I spent some time in China, uh, and yeah. I think we will later talk about that. But yeah, definitely. In the south, and uh, if you look at the Wuhan, um, uh, first of all, I don't want to offend anyone. Yeah, but um, yeah. it's like more. It's like more like um, how to say? It's like to 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 uh, gain attention. And mm. if you look at their their uh, on Weibo or TikTok or whatever, yeah. um, you see they, 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 there's like uh, just a category for eating let animals alive. You know, right, uh, right, right, right. Um, yeah. So, it's just it was just a, a matter of time when such right. a thing break out. Right. You know? Right. Well, it, you know, let, and let's let's be perfectly honest. We're not exactly sure if that if this yeah, right. novel but, coronavirus yeah. is actually from eating bat soup. That's just kind of a. Um, it's one one hypothesis. Essentially, yes. we don't even know exactly if the wet market is the result of this this uh, viral outbreak or if it's um you know due to um you know a mi mixed match of you know things that occurred with the wuhan virology lab and uh you know these types of things but and we probably may not never know um yeah that's so, right but anyway so yeah speaking of you going to china um Tell me a little bit about your history. How did you get into martial arts? How did you get into Chinese martial arts? Uh, you know, okay. give, give, give us some background and lead us into uh, into going to China. So, um, yeah, going to China was not the first decision I took in my life. So, mm. um, but uh, uh, studying Chinese martial arts was one of my first. So I study, nice. I started to study with 10. But before I done some judo and taekwondo and so on, mm. like every child at my age. Right. And um, so I lived in a little village close to the city of Osnabrück. Osnabrück is like a pretty old city in Germany, mm. not very big but old. Mm. And um, so there was uh, there were actually two martial arts schools who offer kung fu, right. and um, the, one was a Korean with like uh, forty black belts. Right. <laughs> and one was a German, uh, Jochen, and he offered like seven star mantis. And okay. uh, so, and I was just obsessed with 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 kung fu. I was just like watching the movies, you know, um, 
even if I'm not that old, but uh, in in German television they they still show like the old Jackie Chan movies and so on. And um, I was really obsessed with that, and um, yes, and started to train there. Right. And uh, I started to uh, to learn Seven Star Mantis, but the Hong Kong lineage. Okay. Maybe maybe you heard of this Lee Kang Wing yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 It's like, um, yeah, we like, we like 200 forms and so on. But okay, right. at, at that age, yeah. it, I mean, at my age, it was all perfect. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was not, yeah. nothing bad about that. Yeah. And, um, that, so, and, and that has like yeah. a, that, that traces like through some of the, the, um, the, the Goshu institutes and stuff like that, where they, they learn a lot of the long fist forms and things like that. Yeah, right. Yeah, you see right, a lot right. of what, with, with some of the Eagle Claw. The, yeah, the Fonza, right. um, you know, Eagle Claw Fonza, you know, Yufe tradition stuff. Um, yeah, but, but uh, to, to, um, to add something to what that is like, um, this kind of lineage was really like just learn form by form by form, mm. form, 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 form right. you know? Right. So there was already not, not much uh, deepness inside. But right. um, Jochen was my first teacher and mm. um, so he was pretty open. Know and he, they have they are not now called uh, Genu Germany, but in the past it was uh, Bailu, right? Well. And um, yes, and jo Jochen somehow found uh, Mike Matello. I think Mike Matello is pretty well known. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Often states, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I um, I never I was never the student of Mike Matello, but mm -hmm. uh, I attended a lot of seminars and workshops and right. so on. And so things started to change, you know, yeah. and um, so movements made more sense. Yeah. Uh, we start to add like issuing forces and, and um, yes, so uh, and then it slowly starts to, to change from uh, um, seven star mantis into mm. the mantis style of uh, what um, Mike was doing. And this was uh, Babu Tanglan, eight step mm. mantis. Right. I think this is also pretty big in America, right? Yeah, eight, eight step is pretty popular, but it, it, I think it comes out of a lot of the um, um, a lot of the Taiwan Wutan guys. Yeah, they do. Right, 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 right. Um, my teacher Jason Zhou, I think, teaches uh, um, eight step mantis as well, and um, I think it's even got some linkage to Xing Yichen as well yeah no, i don't don't I don't quote me on that steps, but the reason why they call it eight steps like because there are two steps Baji, two steps Shini, two steps bagua okay. and two steps tai chi therefore okay. they call it eight step yeah and um uh, uh, so therefore they uh, even even in the motions there are a lot of shiny motions inside mm -hmm. i mean just what you see physically you know um yeah. i mean shiny is a style for itself yeah um, yeah, and so one comes to another, and um, yeah, time passes, and Mike dies. You know, Mike, mm. uh, Mike died in 2009, I right. think, when I'm not wrong. And it was like very de devastating because yeah. um, so things started to, to roll and things started to become yeah. a little bigger. And um, so then we had to, the school had to change. And um, so, what what do you want to do? So, if Mike is your own source, you have to um, find a new source. I mean, positively, because we already had good contacts to Beijing, and um, Jochen also got closer to um, uh, Zhang Xinbin. Maybe you heard of him before? Yeah. Is, I think uh, is, is also pretty pretty popular when uh, pretty famous in Beijing for Tongbei Chuan, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. for Baiyun and Wuxing Tongbei, right. and yes, and so things started again to change, to develop, and so I got more interested. So the, the force issuing point got bigger, and yeah, so then nice. but, uh, not just my martial arts life went on, also my private life went on, and so mm -hmm. some some stuff happened and um, I just felt like uh, I have to I have to leave Germany you know right and, um, so and when I when I thought about what do you want to do you know so sometimes I was 20 26 I think yeah when I'm not wrong and so I said okay what do you want to do so as and then I thought okay I was pretty successful in my job at that time and um, I thought but I still thought like I cannot 
go over. I cannot get better in that. Right. At, le at least not uh, under this under this circumstances. So, um, I thought, okay, I go to China, and going to China is not that easy. So, yeah. um, um, especially when you are uh, from Germany, right. and I mean, actually, when you're from Germany, it's more easier as if you are from Iran or somewhere else. Right. But, um, so to find a job and to do that and uh, yeah. to, to find somebody who give you a visa and so on, that's not that that was not easy. But somehow, I got a job in one week and I oh, had to leave there good. in the next one. And so I have right. to broke up everything I had here and yeah. move over. So this is how I end up in China. Right. What did, what did you end up doing for work over there? So um, I started the first three months um, as an English teacher. Yep. Uh, was very funny, but, but, um, <laughs> uh, but I, I realized that I—I uh, I mean, the teaching was not was not a big problem because yeah. it was like teaching kids, you know, yeah. um, just repeat words and and so on. Right. But I just realized, I, if you are from Germany and you are from and you um, enjoyed a pretty good education, yeah. um, so you we you will feel very fast, very disgusted there, you know. Yeah. Um, because uh, because for me private education was was something very new you know mm. uh, it was actually the first time I came in contact with private education okay. and um, so it was for me very strange to have a sales team in the school you know yeah and so I thought uh, maybe I should do something else and yeah I found a new job at things I can do as is managing mm. and uh, I worked for Dalian Wanda for one year, you know, okay. Wanda. I don't know what, what is that. Wanda, they I think they own a big part of Hollywood. But I'm not okay, wrong. okay. Or at least some studios. So as they actually, this is actually uh, one of the biggest companies in China. Oh, nice. Um, they are for entertainment. They're building shopping malls and cinemas and so okay. On. And yeah, after that, you know, I started my own company and right. we were pretty successful. And after that, I worked for. Uh, one friend of mine as a project manager but yes this was what i have done in china okay like cool professionally <laughs> right what were you looking for when you went to china in terms of martial arts were you expecting to do more tongbei or were you looking for something else in particular or was it just kind of whatever you happened to come across um so First of all, I have, uh, first of all, I thought, okay, maybe I can go on with Tongbei and so on. But um, it always depends on where you end up in China. And because I had no, actually, I wanted, always wanted to go to Beijing, mm -hmm. but um, it just happened that I uh, end up in Dalian because mm -hmm. of um, uh, because it was the first uh, it was uh, the first uh, employee who uh, hired me. Right. And um, so. And but luckily, uh, Dalian is qu is quite uh, famous for Wuxing Tongbei, yeah. and and I think um, in Dalian, if you just look at the numbers, there are more people doing Wuxing Tongbei than Tai Chi, you know. Right. So th this is this is actually pretty norm. And mm. um, but I was like pretty unsatisfied with what mm. I saw. Mm. Um, but I but I have to say okay how I met my teacher you know yeah. uh, before I go on with that because yeah. I met my teacher um, when I went to the park and just trained for myself okay. the second day you yeah. know I wasn't uh, maybe a second day or the first week something like that yeah. and I met him it was like an old guy yeah. come, uh, he appeared like an old guy come to me uh, came to me and um, just asked me what I'm what I'm doing right and then he just started to, to trash talk me and saying you're as a at that time, my Chinese was not good, but I actually understood what he means, you know, by okay. body language. Yeah. <laughs> and everything is wrong, everything is shit, and so on, you know? Right. And then I was a little bit pissed, so, but then he offered me to punch him, you know, so it's to right. really give him something. And I, you know, he was an old guy, so I didn't done very much. So I just right. thought, okay, here, get my fist, you know, <laughs> how I learned that. And, right. uh, and then, no, no, that punched me. And I, okay, I punched him on the chest, you know, and then. <laughs> No, punch me like like <laughs> okay. Uh, come yeah. on, and then yeah. I punched him, but yeah. I was the person who was flying around. Yeah. You know? yeah, And I was so impressed by that because yeah. um, 
he was not he was not appearing like somebody who was um, doing um, Chinese martial arts or something like that. Right. Um, but he just had me, and I said, okay, so it's my first contact. Let's try. I we changed numbers. Uh, my boss called him, and I started to learn from him. Right. And he was like my Chinese teacher at the time, if you want, because yeah. if you don't speak Chinese and um, you are surrounded by Chinese who don't speak English. Um, it's pretty hard to understand. So, for yeah. example, uh, tongue is like pain, you know? Yeah. So he punched me and he asked me, tongue or tongue? Uh, painful or not painful, you know? Yeah. And I just don't know what to answer. I just say, I just I just repeated what he said, tongue or yeah. tongue, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it, he punched me and pu until we, I was I was like unable to, uh, to lift my arm anymore, you know? <laughs> and then, ah, I now understand. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. So this is how yeah. I met my teacher. But yeah. Um, yeah uh, uh, but uh, to go on with Wuxing Pompei, it's quite different um, yeah. what I expected because uh, maybe if you listen to the last podcast of um, Byron mm -hmm. and uh, yeah he has a Chris Wong there and yeah. he is he also learned from. Um, Zhang Qibin, and okay. Zhang Qibin is really like, ex is, he's an expert in, in issuing force, uh, right. in, if you want to call it Fajin, you call it Fajin, yeah? Yeah. but it was like, and, the, and I, at that time I realized that the, the normal Wishing Tombe guys, they don't do that, right. Right? and it's also like a different lineage and so on. Okay, okay, well uh, just to clarify, um, for other people who listen, Dalian is, is pretty far in the north, right? It's pretty far north of uh, Beijing. So it's not exactly kind of in a main area where there'd be a lot of foreigners to begin with, right? No, 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 no. Um, Dalian is, um, is northeast uh, China. Okay. It's actually the, the economically, uh, from the economic perspective, the most powerful city there. Oh, in, wow. In northeast China, and it's a coast city, you know? Okay. It's like, um, and it has more, it has more like a modern history, like um, from, from Japanese invasion and Russian okay. invasion and so on, you okay. know? Okay. So Italy uh, is is actually um, they actually quite a lot foreign there. Um, okay. But uh, not not much uh, are studying uh, martial arts. Right. Okay. Okay. So uh, going back in, into um, into Tung Bay, what what is kind of like the general understanding of 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 the history of Tung Bay? Because there seems to be a lot of different branches of it. You mentioned whooshing or five elements or five phases or however you want to translate that. And yeah. then um, there's, you know, there's Baiyun, Dongbei, mm -hmm. there's a there's a few others that, you know, that, you know, obviously I'm not, I'm not um, remembering off the top of my head right now, but what, what is kind of the differences between some of those Dongbei styles? Good question. Um, I'm I'm actually the wrong guy to, to ask about <laughs> the differences because for me all are the same. You know yeah. what I do is the same. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but as far as I understand, it's like the Wuxing Pongbei in Dalian has like roots into into Xingyi. The guy who invented the Wuxing Pongbei yeah. um, was actually a Xingyi guy. Yeah. Um, um, but I could I also can be wrong on that one. So I'm yeah. very not into. Okay. Any historical figures. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no worries. So, um, so your teacher, uh, what, what what was your teacher's name again that you met? Uh, Yu Guangde. Okay. And you 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 met him, and when you asked him what he was teaching you, what what did he say? He said nothing. Yeah. He said, he's, I, I'm doing nothing. He was just playing around. He said. Okay. So the first, so when when I asked him what do we do, he said we just we just moving, we just doing something, we just right. um, makes we just do sports, you know. And this yeah. went on for a very long time, and this was very important to me because you know when you come when you came as a foreigner to China and you have like this kind of flowery um, communist uh, advertisement image of China, you know. Yeah. So, and especially when you come from abroad into uh, into China and you already studied some Chinese martial arts. You're, yeah. very, you're very much into, okay, what style is it? Which lineage is it? And so right. on. And um, so it was, at, at, at the time it was really important to me, but as more I wanted to know, as less he told me. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's very important for my uh, for my development at that time. Right. And and when did you eventually find out that it was Zuranman? Uh, short before my Baisha. So I okay. practiced one year. Yeah. You know? And um, and my Chinese got a little bit better by the time. And um, so we was what we done some, you know, you know, more taboo from each end. Yeah. It's like normal walking exercise, you right. know, right. and we have something similar to that. Not the yeah. same, but similar, you know. Right. And so this is like like eighty percent of the training. It's like that, and then we have. The, I think I think I showed you my P train. Yeah, it looks quite different, but uh, same same but different, similar. you know. Yeah, and um, but and that and this we done for one year, and uh, uh, and nothing else, you know, mm -hmm. and correcting and here and there. Yeah. And it, uh, and um, of course, application, a lot of application, you know. Yeah. So uh, and so at that time, I started to like ignore what I what it was because I first started to think, hey, it's actually it's, it's actually Xingyi what we are doing, you know, because it looks similar. Right. And then I thought it's maybe e trend because it's it has no forms. And yeah. then I thought maybe it's Bagua. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was at the Baisha. And um, so I saw on the back the banner, and it was like, "Oh, Zero Man," you know. So yeah. um, I was a little bit surprised by that, but yeah. um, it's also good because I think if I um, started the way like, "Oh, we are doing Zero Man," "Oh, we are doing that," I think I did, I would not finish my practice at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could I could I could see that. Um, you know, a lot of people will will learn that it's one thing, and you know, was expecting something else, and then they they end up quitting because they want to go somewhere, you know, and learn right. a sp particular thing. Um, there's not a lot out there on Zidram Um which uh, obviously for everybody who's listening, it's typically translated as natural school or natural boxing or something like that, right? Actually, Zeraman means nature, just nature. Okay. And Zeran, maybe everybody has heard that in the training. Um, it just means natural. You okay. know? Be more Zeran, be more natural. Right. And um, yes, because like Men Pai, like system, people say, okay, it's like a box as a martial arts system. Right. And yeah, you're right. There are not much people doing Zeraman outside. Um, but then it comes now. And the zero and you maybe can find on um, Wikipedia or on uh, YouTube. Yeah, uh, it's um, it's a, it's just it's a totally different style. It's just that's the same name. And yeah. before I go on, I don't want to talk bad about anything. I totally respect what they are doing. Yeah, it's just a different style. You know. Yeah. Um, it's uh, e even if they I sometimes get some messages from people who are doing it and say hey it looks similar we also have walking practices you know mm -hmm. but yeah. I think every style has walking practices yeah you know yeah. so if you go Xingyi, Taiji, Bagua yeah even Tanglang they all have walking practices yeah yeah full work's so, important it's paramount to martial arts <laughs> yes it's like essential you know yeah. if you don't have footwork Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't, if you if it works like the delivery system, you know, I mean, if you can't, uh, if you can't move with your feet, then how are you? How are you going to fight at all? So, yeah, it, it it's so in Chinese, you you say "shou shi liang chang men," train called jiao da ren. It means like um, your hands are just two fans. The rest, you you get punched by the legs. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And um, that's very important to understand because people, maybe you see that when they, when you look, when you see the nonsense Farley videos, you right. know, when they're shaking like they die and, yeah. and everything comes from the hand. No, 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 no. It's a whole body move and it comes from your legs. Right. Point. Right. So. Yeah, that makes, makes a lot of sense. To, to, to uh, answer the question about Zerman, um, this is a. Uh, Zero and you find it's from the south mostly, and it's uh, it has like a lineage from one Lei Shang. You know? mm -hmm. um, he's pretty famous, uh, yeah. uh, as, as far as I understand. But um, pretty our much, Zero is 
it's different. It, it, it don't contains any forms. Right. Um, it. Uh, I learned it from my teacher, he learned it from his teacher, Guo Jujo. He learned it from his grandfather and he learned it from his father. It's more like a family style. You know? Okay, okay. Um, and why do they call it Ziramen? Because, at, you know, it's like the Dongbei area. The people at that time, they moved from Shandong to uh, the northeast China, you know? Okay. Um, because there was promised lands and so on. And at that time, the Japanese attacked, the Russians in, invaded and so on. So it was rough times. Yeah. Um, so what you see is the pictures from Shanghai and Beijing of, of that time is different from there. So you, you hear stories like they had just one trouser in the family, huh. you know? <laughs> so, and, and it gets minus 40 degree up right, uh, right. if you go to Heilongjiang and so on yeah. so it's, it's pretty rough and yeah. um, and especially when people see you doing practice uh, do, uh, because I asked my teacher not my um, not my uh, I asked my shifu not my shifu you know mm-hmm. and um, also said like um, it's why why do we call ourselves and of course because of the um the Taoist idea, but not just this, because if you go out and you you practice something, or people see you practicing like martial arts, you are a danger. You, know, mm-hmm. you could be in danger because you are a threat. You know? Right. And um, so, therefore, uh, they they came up with the phrase a "woman wu pai." That means no system, no style. Mm-hmm. So, and if you um, maybe I, we can send some links. Uh, I can put some. I can send you some links, and you can uh, add them. Yeah, to, absolutely. To that. And um, it really looks like nothing. I mean, it it don't look like a martial art uh, mm-hmm. from from the outside. Yeah. But the training method is uh, extremely smart because you would. Um, because as less form you practice, as more you can, uh, or even as less technique you practice, as more you can focus on other stuff, mm. other important stuff, and okay. um, yeah, yeah, make, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, most of the, uh, I mean, all of the, pretty much all of the Zuran men that I looked up, I mean, it, it all traces through that, the dwarf and the. Um, Du Shen yeah. Wu and one Lai Shang. But, 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 but to be very honest here, yeah. So yeah. if you if, if anyone traces the two thousand year old uh, lineage, <laughs> sorry, I'm really sorry. Yeah? Yeah. And having knowledge what is two thousand years old, no, no, sorry, you don't. Yeah. You yeah. Don't, don't. yeah. And what I don't like, what I really don't like. I mean, everybody can do what they want. Yeah. Yeah. But you cannot take something out of context. You cannot. Just because you do some martial arts, you cannot make a, you cannot open a church because of that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This makes me angry sometimes because yeah. I think, yes, it's good. It's a martial art, you know? It, yeah. You can put, you can take some philosophy out of it yeah. for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, this, there's nothing to do, this is not bad. You can also see your, your whole life based on that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, don't come up with like, with really nonsense. I mean, I, I don't need to explain what nonsense is. Yeah, but yeah. Um, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there's definitely there. There's this aspect within martial arts, and particularly in Chinese martial arts, that um, that it becomes a religion essentially, and it becomes. But it, it's it's really just a method of developing uh, abilities to survive a combative um, ordeal. And not necessarily to become something that's held on a pedestal and worshipped. In fact, right. you know, I mean, it's probably best to take what you can and then forget, you know, where it comes from, and you know, just move on from there. But of course, you know, obviously, that's kind of getting in, into some some philosophy ideas. But it, I think, you know, a lot of people tend to worship their martial art a little too much and um you know and then of course they you know they feel threatened whenever that you know that feels you know like they're gonna they're gonna lose that reality yeah i mean i i can i can i can totally agree to that for example uh, uh, for example the same as a threatened you know because out of nowhere so another guy somebody shows up on youtube on facebook and mm. calls i call calls himself uh, his stuff so it was me, you know. Yeah. So 
without any intent, without any uh, any intent to, 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 to grab some uh, market areas, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, then oh, I, I don't get any, I, I don't, didn't get any threats. I just get like very strange messages, you know. <laughs> And uh, not, I mean, on Facebook, on yeah. you know, on Instagram, and on yeah. YouTube, you know. But, so where I had to start to delete comments because it's, it it went it went into nonsense, right. you know. Right. And, and um, especially when they, I mean, you you can talk shit about me how you want, but don't talk shit about my teacher. My teacher don't know much about these social media stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, just a simple guy, not a rich man, and yeah. he just have his life and he's practicing every day you know yeah uh, and this is what he's doing every day and right. and, and um, so this this make this makes me sometimes very angry when i when i get yeah. when i get through that so, yeah yeah well yeah they be, i mean our, our teachers become like our, our family member our family members you know like our, yeah. our parents essentially um you know that's that's why we end up calling them shifu and shimu you know like they, they're just a they they're people that are that that take care of us and we in turn have to take care of them as well yeah so, right right so for example i mean i have on youtube i think i have a video about my baisha and mm -hmm. um so for if you don't know baisha ceremony baisha is like you are welcomed in the family and you are officially the student or the 2d of your shifu and your shifu is officially your shifu you know yeah um also another reason why i hate when people <laughs> give them the title Shifu. Yeah. Even as it's like it's like it's like it's like a doctor title or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. Oh. yeah. And um so and it was very difficult because um it, it's not like I, I practice two weeks and then we do a bad show or something. Yeah. We practiced in a year already and yeah. uh, I didn't ask for that. He offered me that. You yeah. Know? And I said, Cool, let's do it. And yeah. it was it was really it for him it was not just to have a two D, it's like to have a son. You know, yeah. Uh, and for me, it was also like like second dad. You know, yeah. he was. I mean, he, did, he didn't have much. You know, and my my teacher lives in a poor area, and mm -hmm. he um, and he don't he don't have a he don't have a good. I mean, a pretty great life. You know, yeah. and um, so and still they feed me. They feed me through the time, even uh, through hard times and so right. on. And and it was also for the Gumpu family a pretty big thing because. You have to understand that um, my teacher, my teacher is like, um, it's, it's not the head, but it's like I don't know how to say that. It's like if my if my shayir dies, my teacher is like the head of the family, you know. Right. And my shayir just had one two D, and this is my teacher, and um, the other two Ds are like uh, outdoor students. Do you mm -hmm. call it outdoor students? Right. Yeah. That Call them that. Yeah. yeah, and uh, they are like they don't they, they are make students, but without by sure. And um, so for them, it's, it was a big thing because I'm a foreigner. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, my my teacher don't want to teach the stuff to any Chinese. And uh, right. to, to understand that, um, <laughs> I have to add like my teacher's boxer. It's not like what Western boxing. Yeah. You know? And uh, he is a official. He he uh, he boxed pretty successful in China yeah. and um, he's also known in the boxing scene there right. uh, I mean uh, like, like in the Dalian in the Dalian boxing scene yeah. and but not in the but not in the Chinese martial arts scene um, okay uh, at least the people uh, say that they don't know him actually most of them know know him because yeah. um, you know when they're young they all punch each other so yeah and, um, <laughs> Yes, and um, so he always had like he, he always liked the way uh, foreigners are practicing boxing mm -hmm. and um, think about things, see it more from a science perspective, right. and um, so for him it was very important uh, to to have me as a student, not yeah. because I'm very good, just because maybe the science uh, the time just uh, brought me to him. And um, but for the others, it was like difficult, like to accept that because yeah. um, a lot of people want to learn from him, but he just refused. Mm. You know, he just refused. He just no. Why yeah. should I? You know, yeah. because um, the reality in China is now. I think I'm not the first one who learned there, but yeah. um, in China. But I will be the last generation who had the chance to do that because. Mm. Um, 
if, if, you, if you live in China, you have to understand that what is important in China for, for, uh, for a young man to have a car, to have a house. You know? right. Because if you don't have these two things, yeah. um, you can't find a wife. Right. You know? right. And having a child is essential. If you don't have a child, it's like um, yeah. the family cannot accept that. Yeah. You know? So there's no time for yeah. martial arts. Yeah. You know? yeah. And um, therefore, yeah. my teacher has always liked this attitude like he don't like to teach Chinese. Yeah. 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 And, and obviously, he, you know, that's kind of the, the more, you know, quote unquote traditional way is that it's not about having as many students as possible. It's, yeah. it's more about having a few, one, one even maybe, where you pass on whatever knowledge you have, how, however much knowledge you have. Yeah. And, um, you know, leave it to the future generations, but it requires a lot of hard training over a long period of time. And, you know, I mean, obviously here in the West, most of us just don't have that time. Um, I know I definitely don't have as much time as I'd like to devote to training. And then, you know, obviously there is, as, as China becomes more modernized, they're, they're losing that, that, you know that time that they would have throughout the day in the morning or evening whenever they would be able to train they have to work and provide and and to um create a status so that they can have a family and everything yeah i agree totally agree yeah um, i just think the west it's it's like i think the the, the, the school model i think it's not working anymore mm. you know yeah. Because I think people realize also if you have a school and because if you have a school, you cannot let people go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and letting people go is an important step in martial arts. Mm -hmm. in my, you know, let them go. Let let experience something. Have your own ideas. Bring them in. And um, and if you have a school, it's not, it's, there's no, no no space for that. It's just a space for okay how I can uh, manage to pay the rent not next month, you right. know, right. Um, to, to put it on a, on a nice way. And um, yeah. therefore, I think um, the concept of the traditional concepts, like having one student, two, four, three, you know, um, uh, this is maybe the, the concept for the future. Yeah. 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 And I think, uh, you know, I mean, there's nothing, you know, and, and don't, don't, don't get me wrong, and I don't. I don't think anybody should get you wrong on this either. There's, you know, for anybody who hold, you know, has a school and runs a, you know, a commercial school of any size. Obviously, you know, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of energy, and um, you know, you're devoted to it. You're you're passionate about it, but um, it does become kind of easy to water things down a bit. So, and, and a lot of times it becomes more of a, more of a fitness course rather than a martial arts course. I mean, I agree, I agree. I, 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 my, my intention was not to say that it's not, it's not good to have school. I yeah. think it's good to have, to spread the, the culture because if, if you see a martial arts school, you are not just martial arts school, you are like a culture ambassador, you know? Right. And, uh, and I think it's, it's, it's also, good to have them but especially for those as I said who want to go a step further so it's important to to find a cut for themselves but mm -hmm. I think I mean look at myself I, I also started in a, in a like in a normal martial arts school you know mm -hmm. and I went a long way with that and yeah. I'm very happy about that uh, yeah. it's not that I um, experienced something bad or so or I, it was bad for my um, um, it was bad for my cultivation or whatever. Um, so I'm very happy to uh, to have this experience there in Germany. You know? Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, for me, the what seems to seems to work for most people in the in the U.S. is that they just kind of teach either privately or they teach um, in a park. You know, mm -hmm. where they just have maybe a group of students, and you know, obviously there's you know, these people are not wearing uniforms or not, you know, there's not any, you know, individual ranking or belts or anything like that. And 
that's you know just I mean that's kind of the old school way we worked in 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 China and Taiwan as well that you know I mean you know this is really the only way to kind of pass down the the actual traditional stuff without allowing it to be watered down too much. Yeah, right. I agree. I agree. No. Totally. Um, so let, let's get into kind of the curriculum of Zuran Men. What, what typically would someone say you had someone who came to you and they wanted to start studying with you in Castle, Germany? How, how would you start them out and kind of kind of lead us down that that path for them? So um, first of all, I make uh, for, for me it's to make clear Zeraman is a tool, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a tool to learn how to adapt to an opponent, mm-hmm. how to utilize force and to issue force. Right. So, and um, now to bring back the name Zeraman, nature. What is nature in Chinese? Nature is heaven, man, earth. If you want, yeah. And um, and what what what's the, the idea behind that is to bind both, bind heaven and earth, if you are a living being. And um, so Zoran is based on 18 sentences, you know. And the first one is, uh, or the, the first and second one, Ilu Sanji Jin Fa That means like the E disappears in the ground hmm. and the force goes towards the sky. Hmm. Um, therefore, you have like, uh, like, it's like a charging cable between you and your phone. You know, right. between your computer and your phone. So, and um, so there it starts our first and our most difficult um, practice. And this is Zolu. Zolu, if you translate it, is just walking, you know. And it's a really slow walk where you do not lift your heel, you just move your foot. You lift your foot with your with your qua and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just step by step, step by step, and so you you, you also cannot cheat yourself. The moment you cheat, like you want to um, you want to uh, open your cow uh, your 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 cow uh, uh, what's cavalic the schlüssel bein um, the bone between your shoulders, you know, um, or in front of over your, over your chest. Um, right. So it, it's it you cannot cheat yourself on that. That means right. the moment you do try to cheat, your real your body realizes that. You know, it's you, you, you bend you bend too much forward and so on. So and what you, you are going to learn actually is like how to use your shoulder first, then how to use your qua, how to use your knees, how to use your angles, how to combine them together. And um, from if if you master that, like if, if you if you get an idea of that, then we start with something we call Tai Ji Wu or Ahu Bamen, like um, why Tai Ji Wu? Because why, why do I why do we call it Tai Ji Wu? Because it's pretty similar to Tai Ji. Mm-hmm. Um, do you experience in Tai Chi? I think so, right? Yeah, yeah. You know the the, the thirteen positions in Tai Chi? Yes. Yeah. So Peng Lu Ji An Sai. Front, back, left, right, middle, and then eight forces. Right. So and imagine that as one movement. Okay. All thirteen in one movement, and um, this this is like what we say after women. It's like you practice all the directions, all the forces in one move um, mm-hmm. as standby. You know. Okay. So and from there on, we we have like um, five elements, um, but we just use the five elements just to help you to issue the force. Right. Or because um, we have something else we call it eight hammers. Okay. But they are so simple. If you do not have these inner, I just call them. Let, let's call them inner skills. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. um, it's like uh, impossible to really issue them. You know, to really okay. use them. And um, yes, and we have all. There's also like eighteen shadow hands, thirty six shadow legs. But right. these are like more. This is like really then advanced stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, and you don't need to learn that. The, the most important thing is the zone, the walking practice. Mm. If you can do that, you can you can do everything else too. Right. So it's pretty simple. So that means no forms. Yes. Yeah. About you. I mean, all styles are like about yourself. You know? Yeah. Well, it's like not, it's, yeah. Zero is no exception. It's also nothing special. Uh, my yeah. teacher always said zero is just like air in your hands. You know. Okay. Um, it's like the name is not important. You know, yeah. I, 
uh, he once said, if, if I have a fight, you know, yeah. uh, he will not jump in. So he, I have to fight by myself. Yeah. What's the name of my teacher? Is who, nobody cares. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, yeah, this is important for me. It's also important to teach. Right. Right. Well, I think that kind of that, that goes to the idea that you know, there's a lot of people who like you know. I come down from this lineage where there was this great master who was beating the snot out of everybody. I mean, we all know the story. It's all this, there's always the same story in every, you know, quote unquote style. But, um, you know, when it's you in the fight, it's just you in the fight. There's, there's nobody else. So, uh, yeah, I have a funny story to that. Yeah. And I went to Shanghai once yeah. uh, because, um, uh, he had to renew his uh, WBA uh, coach license, whatever. Yeah? Okay. And um, uh, and then we went to a park, and there was like a pretty famous Bagua teacher there. But uh, I forgot, it was it was nay it was a shine it was Nanjing Nanjing, and um, I forgot his name. It was he was also pretty old, and yeah. he started to talk, and that yeah, I learned it from the, from him, and he was he was famous for that and he learned it from him he was famous for that and my, my teacher just asked him so you met them and he said no how can I met them dead for 200 years you know yeah. so so how do you know <laughs> yeah. so, and uh, yes so my teacher is not like the normal rude guy he's like yeah. he, if, if he wants you he, uh, he's going to make you lose face you know yeah so, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, I think we need to to understand what what wuda really means in, in Chinese martial arts. That it's not not just about like blind respect or blind faith. That it's about um, you know honesty and 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 being upright and and yeah. and not you know not you know defrauding people and stuff like that. Yeah. And and if if you know you know and you know you know you know what i'm talking about i mean it's not yeah, it's more like a night coat you know? right right and uh, yes yes you're right uh, of course uh, and um what what do you want to say i forgot what i want to say <laughs> oh, sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah you were you were talking about this this teacher and then you had Era. And and but this is not like everywhere. Like uh, when I, especially I don't do push hands. I think push hands, in my opinion, is one of the less important uh, practice because when you do push hands, it's more it, it becomes like a competition. Yeah. You know? yeah. And why do push hands then? Why just wrestle? Yeah. You know? so, exactly. Uh, it, and it's like it's like it's like uh, wrestling for poor people. You know? so, <laughs> <laughs> and, That's a good and, way to and, describe it. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I don't. I don't want to. Again, I don't want to offend anyone. I think yeah. it's it's maybe a nice practice for feeling and yeah. for, for so on. But the moment it becomes competitive, sorry. Yeah. So it, it's it's just it's it, yeah. It's wrestling. It's wrestling, grappling. Right, or whatever, yeah. You know? And um, so when I go on the, when I went to the parks in uh, in Dali, and so people sometimes like to challenge me because you know I mm. practice Chinese martial arts. It's obvious. And um, they're like, hey, you know, a foreigner, let, let's make him lose face in front of the camera. Mm. You know? Yeah. I mean, then, okay, so then they can be pushed and said, I don't push, but we can try if you want, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and the moment they open the camera, I get very aggressive. Like, like yeah. uh, I, I don't say I, I touch them, they fly right and fly away. No, 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 like, like, um, like China and so, so on, so that they have it on tape. Yeah. And, um, so and but, but 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 what was for me very interesting was like as in the beginning said I said my teacher was is not famous for uh, Chinese martial arts you know and mm -hmm. at least not obviously and um, but somehow everybody knows him <laughs> you know so I this was very strange for me so because yeah. um, uh, there was a guy uh, he was like you know you sometimes some you see some people like that they they are like in a circle and then they touch each other and they fly away. You know, yeah. and I was curious, and I said, "Hey, can I do that too?" You know, I said, "No, no, 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 no. Yeah. You have it, teacher. You don't, you, you don't need, you don't need to learn from me. You know, so yeah. I don't teach others." And and so, how do you know that I have a teacher? I'm a foreigner who just went here and to ask you yeah. if I can touch that. You know, yeah. and um, yeah, I mean, I will not say frauds because I think 
um, there are two sides of metal here, you know. But yeah. um, um, for example, Xu Xiaolong, you know, so my, my teacher is a big fan of Xu Xiaolong. Yeah. You know? um, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, I think the moment you, you do you, you do it seriously, you, you like it. You know, yeah. uh, maybe you don't like the way he's talking. Maybe you don't like he's like yeah. he, um, yeah. he's like very aggressive also in his in his speeches. But right. um, I like him too. I like him. I, I, it's it's a shame that I ne never had the, ch the chance to, to meet him. But I think it's also maybe better for him yeah. because um, if you're like in his position and you then you meet some strange foreigners, it's maybe <laughs> not good for you. you know? Yeah. And um, and. What is what is he doing? He's he's uh, people say he's, he's calling out frauds. Yeah, I I don't think so. I don't think it's just frauds. I think he's he's showing Chinese martial arts in the mirror. Yeah, you yeah. know, um, because what is for you a fraud? Like like Lele Lele is uh, for example he was pr uh, quite famous in Chengdu. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and. Uh, People just lose, uh, uh, lost the connection to the fighting, to the contact sport. Yeah. You know, yeah. is they just? I mean, people just lost the connection that martial arts is actually sports. Yeah. So, whatever you do, if you if you do not have cardio, if you if you if you, if you do not work out, your martial arts can be shitty too. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So and what you say, it's art. It's just like a, like a drop on your sports yeah you know so for example what how is how is my my, my, my training how do i start do i start with a qigong session no do i start with uh, tao lu no i start with rope skipping mm -hmm. for half an hour an hour yeah you know? and um why not just for my condition uh, not, not just for, for the cardio and stuff you right. know just simple for hand foot coordination right no? So, and these simple things, um, as more you don't do those and you talk more about your an ancestors, yeah. as the worse it gets, you yeah. know, and it gets worse to that point that there is no Chinese martial arts. And actually, to be honest, in 10 years, if, if you are Chinese and you want to learn Chinese martial arts, you have to buy, you have to buy a ticket to Russia, to Europe, to America. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everything's been supplanted to to outside of China, pretty much. Yeah, even even Taiwan, I hear, is becoming pretty pretty scarce, in in um, you know, in in in, in um, practical Chinese martial arts. Yeah, I think I think they are uh, one, one one big issue there is that they never get the gap. You know, hmm. um, they never get the gap between. <laughs> As I said, like with the sports part, you know that, right. that you need to sometimes adapt yourself. You know, yeah. you have to see Chinese martial arts as a way to gain skills, right? Not movements. Right. Movements change, you know, right. like right. fashion changes, but taste do not change, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And um, and I think people, I think it's already over. I think there are really less people who do that. And maybe when when we do our job good, and we can look in hundred years back and say, hey, there's a new movement there. Yeah. But I think uh, if you look at the mass people from the mass, and um, especially when it comes to Wudang and Shaolin and such yeah. such such stuff, yeah, you see it. So people lost it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems like a lot of the younger generations are not not really getting into it anymore. Anyways. And, they have no uh, chance to do that. Yeah, yeah. It's just impossible to do. You yeah. Know? Imagine. So, if you want to enter primary school in China, you have to do a you have to do a test. Yeah. A test in math, in English, yeah. in um, and on so on. You have no time. Really, yeah. you have no time. And uh, it's also not really their fault, in my opinion. You know. Yeah. As you grow up differently, I grew up differently. Yeah. We had time to go to the forest and build our little little house out of wood. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they maybe never saw a tree, and not yeah. that bad. You know, but um, maybe they never went to a forest. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah, I mean, I also have a son. This is also the reason why I took him here. It's not like I could not 
stay in China anymore, you know? Yeah. Um, they just took him here because the circumstances to grow up are yeah. better. Right. Right. Well, um, we're getting pretty close to an hour here. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> Talk too much. No, no, it's okay. It's actually good. Um, it's uh, it's been pre pretty informative about um, about your, your your you know what you do and what you practice and stuff like that. Um, is there anything really kind of you wanted to to d discuss in particular while you were on here? Um, yes, I think um, what I want to share is like whatever style you do, whatever. Uh, what whatever lineage you do you know in the end it's about you if you can't do nobody will do it for you you know so relax take a simple motion and practice it practice it till it's perfect so mm. this is my message <laughs> very nice very nice and, and what and and sorry uh, that I'm always jumping from A to D, from E to B, <laughs> but it's like my nature. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. That's all right. I think uh, you know people will have to just kind of piece it together for themselves because that's well, that's just how it works. So. <laughs> yes, um, but anyways, it was great having you on. Is uh, is there any way that uh, people can get in contact with you? And obviously, I can. I'll, 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 I'll put the contact stuff in the show notes, but anything uh, you know you want to put on put on the air so that people can kind of jot it down while yes, they're listening. Sure. I, mean, I mean, you can you can find me on. Uh, I, may, I gave you the links already. You can find yeah. me on um, uh, WeChat, uh, not WeChat, uh, on <laughs> sorry, on YouTube and on Facebook and on mm -hmm. Instagram. But um, I'm not so open when it comes to teaching. So, uh, yeah. for example, if you smoke and drink, I don't teach. Okay. You know? So I have simple rules. So right. and um, I'm not the guy who who, give, who makes pictures and give you a black belt or whatever. Right. You know. So if you want to get better, you're welcome. Yeah. You know. Um, if you are weak, I can help you to get strong. If you are strong, I can help you to get stronger. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's it depends on you. Right. So I I'm, I'm not so open. But if you are interested, you can always contact me. Right. Okay. And then you you teach more on like a private basis not not so much uh um you know group classes or anything like that how, how do you no, typically no, I mean, if i would have enough students i would also do a group but yeah um, as i said uh i'm not so open right now mm -hmm. maybe it will change in the future because i uh, i have a lack of money and i have to start to make online videos and mm -hmm. start to make forms out of theorem and, and get rich but, uh, <laughs> thanks God, it's not like this now. Yeah, I don't know how it will be in the future. So. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, fair enough. Well, uh, uh, that being said, we'll probably all be like that pretty soon if uh, if this continues and we're not allowed to uh, to see each other in, in person anymore. So, um, but okay. Yeah. Well, um, I'll get everything up on the uh, on the uh, on the site there and uh, people will be able to you know contact you if they have questions or you know look look into even future seminars i know that you bring your teacher over for for seminars to germany um from time to time so um you know i'm sure people will be wanting to uh to get it to get in on that okay. um but you know we'll, we'll, i'll put all that information in there for you and uh we'll we'll get you we'll get you all taken care of Okay, take care. Thank you for having me. Uh, bye. Yeah, bye. Nice him. Have a good one. All right. Thank you so much for listening today. I appreciate you being on. And I just want to say thank you to uh, Nassim for coming on and listening and, and uh, you know, chatting with me and, and doing an interview. Um, you know, him and I, have, you know, have talked over, over the past couple of years and we, we share a lot of similar views when it comes to training and stuff like that. And, and, um, even though I tend to do a lot of, um, you know, styles that do have a lot of forms and stuff like that. Um, when it, you know, just comes to fighting, you abandon it and you go with what works in the most efficient high percentage move. And, um, you, you know, as, as, um, some people are fond of saying, you do not rise to the occasion, you 
fall to the level of expectation of your training. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, remember, if you want to support the podcast and the other productions that I uh, put out there through Ground Dragon Martial Arts, you are more than welcome to go to Patreon and look up Ground Dragon Martial Arts on Patreon. This uh, podcast will be posted up there um, first before it's released to everybody else. So if you want to uh, get on that, you can uh, go ahead and donate $1. I got a special thing coming up pretty soon with um, uh, Sunstyle Bagua. I'll be uh, demoing some of the uh, um, teaching, doing an instructional for that. And that will be a, a second tier where you can pay five dollars to uh, to learn that material. Obviously, not really showing so much the fighting. Um, maybe that that can come on later, but um, you'll be able to see and learn the, uh, the the form through through the Patreon site. All right, thank you guys. I hope, have a great day. Stay safe and healthy, and I'll speak to you guys soon.